Hi, I'm Jeremy, and today I'm going to show you how I made these. Stick around, I'll show you how I did it. So I'm making these boxes out of some just some scrap pine I had laying around. Um, that's kind of my scrap pile there in the corner of the shop. So first thing I do is uh, uh, run it through the joiner, uh, joint one side, and then uh, splitting these down the middle. Not exactly, but you know I kind of eyeballed it, so close to down the middle as I could get them. Um, just another angle on the band bandsaw there and then uh, once I got them cut then I uh, will run them through the thickness planer and get uh, both boards oh, I guess there's four boards and I had to split them in half uh, get all four boards the same thickness um, that way the the sides of the boxes are all the same thickness um, so that's what I'm doing here kind of smoothing them out get them the same size and uh, also making them flat and nice um, then I cut them to width and then uh, I'll do a little layout and figure out how long I want them and then uh, next thing to do is put them on the crosscut sled um, I don't like using the uh, the miter uh, miter jig for the uh, table saw so I built this crosscut sled I, I like using this much better I also have a miter saw, but it doesn't give me very good 90 cuts without a whole lot of effort. So uh, this just makes it simple and easy, and uh, it's pretty convenient um, to my to my table saw there. So uh, I figured out how long I wanted these pieces, and uh, so I I just put a stop lock on the the fence of the the jig there. And it's about here when I realized that I don't have enough room uh, off to off to the right side of uh, of what you're viewing there, uh, which would be from my point of view, the left side of the saw is my welder, and it's in the way. I got junk pile on top of it, so I figured just easier to move the welder as it does to move the fence and the stuff that's on the side of the saw. So that's what I did. So. I'm uh, just going to cut the uh, the end off this, get it square on the end, and then I'll uh, set up the, the stop block on the other side. Um, and then now that that's set up, now I can have very repeatable same cuts. So that's what I'm doing, just cutting enough, enough uh, sides to do a few boxes here. I'm pretty much just using up all the stuff I had um, split down the middle of the bandsaw and then ran through the thickness planer. A pretty decent stack of uh, box sides when I get done there, and then he, now I'm uh, cutting down the ends of the boxes because they'll be rectangular boxes. Um, and then now I'm popping the the blade out of my my table saw, and I'm going to put in a little uh, a dado set. Um, uh, I got this uh, Marples um, dado blade set. And uh, there's two like two exterior blades that uh, if I put just the two blades it gives me a quarter inch which I, I like for this sort of a, a box joint um, which is what these the joinery on the boxes are so here's my box joint jig you see I kind of have these wooden blocks glued to the outside and that's just so I get repeatable uh, alignment whenever I put it to my miter gauge on my saw there and then I got this. Uh, you can see I got like a, it's a hardy, uh, a hard board that I put in front of my my jig. And the reason I do that is just uh, helps to reduce some chip out. Um, and then uh, if you guys haven't seen um, box joint jigs or finger joint finger joint jigs, another w way of saying that, uh, there's lots of great videos on YouTube for how to make those, how to use those. So if you're interested in that, uh, check that out. Um, so here I, I show me uh, cutting down the ends. You can see that I had the long pieces already already cut, so I'm just fitting the ends. And, and this is kind of my process: is I'll uh, 
do a couple ends at a time. Those boxes are the same, all the sides are the same. So I'll get one side on and then I'll figure out how do I need to cut the other side. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. Get that cut out and then I'll fit those up. And everything seems to be fitting pretty good, looking pretty decent. So I'm pretty, pretty pleased with that. So now I'm just preparing for a glue up. You can see my bench looks pretty terrible. Um, now this paper's just trying to avoid making it worse than it already is, putting this paper down. So um, getting ready to do this glue up. And uh, I just put a pile of glue on these finger joints and uh, it's really sloppy and messy, but it's quick, which is why I do it. So. Put a bunch of glue in and then I just let the, the amount of glue push into all the crevices and uh, and then clamp it up and then I take a little sawdust and that fills any kind of nooks and crannies that um, my, my joint, my, my poor craftsmanship leaves behind. So <laughs> uh, that's the reason for the sawdust, it just fills in little cracks. So it's, it acts like, like a wood filler and if you use the, the dust from the actual cuts it matches perfectly to the, whatever wood you're using. So uh, the second one you can see I, I made it a little crooked so I put the, the clamp or, um, diagonal across there and then uh, taking it to the disc grinder. Obviously this is a homemade disc grinder but it works pretty good. Uh, just flattening out the edges. I, when I make those box joint jigs I, I always make the ends so they, they protrude a little bit. So I'll flatten the, flattening those out and um, this grinder, this disc grinder or disc sander leaves a pretty rough finish which I actually thought was kind of cool and I was wanting it to to be look kind of like an old kind of wooden box and I thought this made it a little bit more rustic looking so I I kind of left the uh, the the sanding marks that, that that tool left behind which I in the end I actually really liked um, so now what I'm doing is I'm just going to trace out the the last two sides of the box. Um, if you make your box square and straight, then you don't have to cut it to fit. You can just measure it and cut it. But uh, to me, it's just as easy to slap it together and then cut that piece to fit. Um, so here I'm. I've already traced out the box sides and I'm rough cutting them here with my with my compound miter saw. And then once I get those roughed out, then I'll take it over the bandsaw and uh, cut pretty close to the line. Then I'll just finish it up, uh, finish up the sides on the sander. I didn't realize when I was recording this that I wasn't very in frame. <laughs> so it's, it's the reason it's kind of off, off out of frame there. But um, I'm learning. Anyway, um, so uh, this, I had, this is after I had glued up. Um, glued the other sides on and I'm just flattening it out and smoothing it the rest of the way. Um, once I get that sanded down then I will cut the uh, lids off the box with my bandsaw. Sometimes I use a table saw but I, I prefer if my box will fit under my bandsaw I prefer to cut the lids off boxes with that. It seems to be easier. Um, although here, I, I just added that fence to my bandsaw that got caught, caught a ripping fence and realized that I can't get that fence close enough to my blade. It's it's it was hitting my 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 bearing there blade bearing. So uh, anyway, well, once I realized that, I cut the lid off the other side and it worked fine. So here what I'm doing is I'm just uh, on either end of the lid I'm going to add these little thin pieces of wood that uh, I cut to fit. Um, I think I just used a hand saw to cut those all to fit and then sanded them to have a pretty snug fit um, and just using a little CA glue to hold those on. Um, these boxes um, is is just meant is uh, like a kind of like a gift box. These, these knives that are going in here I made for a friend uh, friend and his son so um, these I just thought it would be cool to get them in, in a nice little box like this uh, which is what I'm doing here now I mentioned before I, I left the the sanding marks in from the the disc grinder so what I'm doing here is I'm just kinda of rounding the edges so 
no one gets a splinter and they're easy to you know nice to handle um, just going around both boxes with this little handmade sanding block here there's one all sanded up ready for a finish and uh, the other one I did the same way uh, and I'm just putting some Danish oil on these boxes um, yeah so just a little light coat I only did one coat of this and uh, liked how it looked liked how it turned out and these are not going to be strong boxes outside storage anything like that they're just kind of a uh, one time use to get these these kind of like gift boxes or I mean you could do a keepsake box the same way the set them on blocks as they dry um, so they dried in the shop for a few hours and then uh, now what I'm doing is uh, I cut out some Kaizen foam that would fit in this box and I'm uh, I'm tracing out the shape of the knife um, on the foam and then I'll use a an exacto knife to cut out the the shape of the knife and then I'll you, that Kaizen foam comes in layers so you just peel out a single layer for the the blade itself and a few layers for the handle and you know use your imagination you could use this foam, this foam for just about anything you wanted to that would fit in that box that you wanted to give as a gift um, but I thought it would look cool and uh, I had been wanting I had seen a couple other youtubers um, using this stuff and I wanted to give it a try so this is what I decided to do and that fits pretty pretty snug in there and I think it looks kinda cool so I'm pleased with how this fits and I'm pleased with how it looks and um, doesn't affect the lid it sits down in there far enough where the little pieces of wood doesn't doesn't interfere with the foam and uh, that went well so I'll uh, repeat the process on the uh, on the second box and you can see one knife I did with a stainless steel bolster and stainless steel pins and the other one was uh, a brass bolster and brass pins which you'll see that here in just a few seconds same process uh, although what I did is I cut that piece that the knife uh, the, the silhouette of the knife is to fit the foam and it made it way easier for me to center it on the foam um, so, you know, I feel like a lot of these things, the more you do, the easier they get and the more little tricks you learn like that. Um, but that seemed to work out pretty good. And then just putting uh, the foam in the second one and then there's that second knife I was telling you about with the, uh, the brass bolster and brass pins. Um, and that one turned out good too. So I was very pleased with both boxes. Anyway, that's it. Uh, appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.